that's what a lot of people don't know. You know, they, they think Gordon and Smith, it sounds like a law firm or something, but yeah, they were just two good friends. And uh, in high school here at Mission Bay High, they both fed off each other's energy and all this determination and the excitement, you know, with the foam surfboard and things just took off. 62, 63, we were making surfboards and we were riding surfboards, but nobody had really put anything all together yet. We had two young shapers that were really getting good in the water and they were getting pretty knowledgeable. And one of them was Skip Fry and the other one was Mike Henson. My Uncle Floyd, my dad, Mike Henson and Skip, they all kind of came together and worked on this new outline. Mike Henson liked the long parallel board, liked the speed type of thing. And Skip Fry liked the, the wide point in the, in behind the center. Totally opposite surfboards. One turned real well, but the other one had, had good speed. And so we got together and we made a couple of surfboards experimenting, which was hard to do because money was hard to come by and we lived board to board. For the first time that I'd known of, we were thinking what the rails would do and what the fin placement would do. And we just were trying to figure out what what worked and what didn't. And we actually came up with a surfboard. We moved the wide point to the center. I gave it a crummy name. I called it the quarter speed, but basically it rode really well. And it was well, well thought out. My dad always believed in making people better surfers. And so I think part of this was actually making a board that was a little bit easier to surf. So by putting the wide point closer to center, as soon as you stand up, you're actually kind of at more of a pivot point where the board is much easier to turn, you know, while you're in the trim position. Guys that we had tried to get to ride our boards before were actually coming down to our shop in San Diego and buying this uh, quarter speed surfboard. I think that was the real fun. That 63 through 65 was, was really fun. A lot of people like to mark areas on the board and stop at the pencil mark. I can do that, but for me, I just prefer to do it free form like this and let the board come out like it should from the blank. Talk about the amount of talent that have come through Gordon and Smith surfboards, and Glenn Hoffman is one of them. He still works for us today. He's one of the many guys that I've been lucky enough to, to be around and work with. starting the, the late 60s all the way through the 70s. It was like every week they were making something new. My dad had already picked up some of the best talent that was available in San Diego, which is actually pretty incredible. Like Skip Fry, Mike Henson, I mean, that's just to name a few. And um, they had a really good team of craftsmen and surf team. The learning curve increased rapidly because of that. There's been hundreds of craftsmen that have come through. Decade after decade, talent after talent. A true craftsman, yes, yes. Eight other people that touch your board while it's being made are unsung heroes. It's tough work. 
I had some scientists come in here one time and they couldn't even believe the quality. I go, you know, you know, if it's hotter, a little less catalyst. We run the business the same way our father taught us. Eric and I, looking back through a lot of the designs and the shapes, there was like an evolution of, of models. A lot of them, we have a lot of models. So a lot of the, the designs we've taken up and actually kind of refined them and, and uh, modernized them to, to work a little bit better. And that's kind of how Eric and I feel like we get to work with our shapers today to kind of finish some of these things that they're so excited to get on to the next thing that they never finished what they were working on. Mm -hmm. 